Hello everyone, I'm Harris Georgiakakis and today we're going to talk about React state management with Mobex. For obvious reasons, I've sorted my name in order for everyone to remember. <laughs> so, I'm going to talk a bit about uh, who am I, my experience, then we're going to talk about the problem with uh, state management and React, who, well, we all know that it's quite of a pain sometimes. And after that, we're going to talk about the alternative, which is Mobex, and how it is going to help us achieve more productivity and write cleaner code. After that, I have a quick demonstration that I'd like to share with you. So, about me. I'm a full stack developer at Trinomi. Trinomi is the host of this event for this month. We're basically in this very nice building. So, problem with uh, state management and React. We've all been there. When we write a React, app a React application, this is the proper model where we have a parent that has two children, child one and child two. In that case, let's say that child one is an input box. And child two is basically a label that prints whatever the user has input in uh, the input box. Right now, in order to pass the value from child one to child two, we need to have a function in the parent, which is basically going to be sent to child one as a prop. Every time we change something in child one, we need to use that prop, which goes back to the parent, re-renders, and then passes the, the state as a prop to child two, and this is where you can actually see your changes. Funny or not, it is a bit of a nightmare sometimes because this is a very simple tree structure. Imagine if you have like something way more complex than that. So, why Mobex? Mobex is a state management alternative which is quite lightweight. It's very simple and very easy to install. You don't have to deal with uh, way too many architectural changes. A good example is that if we compare it to Redux, which is another popular alternative. Redux can do many things, but the problem is that you need to integrate your application into Redux, not apply the state management into your application. So obviously if you have a very big application, it's going to be a, like a separate project by itself and it's gonna to take too much time to apply that. Another good thing with, uh, so for that reason, Mobex is like very straightforward. You can just simply replace the state with Mobex. And if you want to go even deeper, it's very scalable. So it has um, functions where you can force it to use all of the store properties and uh, use everything the proper way as a state, ma state management tool. Especially people who are familiar with Redux can, can benefit a lot uh, with that. So, this is basically the, uh, an example of uh, the architecture of Mobex. You have an event which leads to an action, and then the action modifies the state, which then updates the, co the computed values, and then this triggers a reaction, and then it goes back to the action, and this is the cycle. It's quite straightforward, not very difficult to apply that to your own application without any big changes. So, let's talk about the types of Mobex. Mobex uses observables, which are basically variables that you can use them anywhere in your application. And what is good about observable values is that once they change in one part of uh, the application, they instantly change in every other part that they're being called. In order to do that, we have actions. Actions are basically, you can see them as like functions that modify the, the value of an observable. Then you have the computed values, which are basically, you can think of them as a read-only function which takes the, um, the observable values and uh, does computations and gives you the result without affecting the, the actual observable value. A good example is, let's say that we have X and Y, both of them are observables. A computed value can be the sum of these two values. So, then we have um, different 
triggering functions like autorun, which basically you can you can observe like a specific observable, and every time the value changes, you can write the code uh, to do like uh, something specific. Then we have observers. Observers, think about the, them as you need to specify that the files that are going to be using MobX need to be specified as observers. Again, I'm going to uh, talk a bit more in detail about observers and all that in the code example. MobX comes with a quite good dev tools which they allow you to do the debugging process in a not so painful way. And um, yes, if you are a big fan of using state management like the proper way, MobX offers a strict mode where basically you can force the code to just use the Redux actions in order to modify the state. So, this is an example of um, a parent with two children written without any state management tool. As you can see, we have the parent which renders child one and child two. You go to child one, you have all this painful component will mount, component will receive props. And uh, basically in the render, you see that it's an input where every time you type something, it goes to this type function, type 31, which basically calls the prop, that is a function coming from the parent, which again, if you go to the parent line seven, it's a function that basically does a, sets the state with a, the current uh, value. And after that, it re-renders everything after you set the state. And you go to child two with the updated value, which goes down to line 42, and it basically renders a new value. You all know that this can be a big time nightmare when it comes to more complex files. So, this is the same example using MobX. The only thing we need to do is initialize a, a store where we, if you see line five, we have a class user store, which has a user that is a string, and then it has an action which is called add user. That basically it just, every time the user types something, it updates the user. Then we decorate it. So I'm going to talk a, a bit more about the, why I use that logic in the, in the coding example. And after that, we just like uh, create a new instance of the user store called store. And then we go and we write the code again as we did earlier. But as you can see the code now, it's much cleaner. The parent doesn't have a single function apart from render. Then you go to the first child, which is the input. Again, apart from the value, all the rest are exactly the same. When you type something, it goes to the type function which basically calls the action from inside the store, updates everything, and then the properties of child two, which is a user, simply gets displayed there. Very simple, nothing very complicated, pretty straightforward, just works. So, now, time for the demo. I'm gonna show you how I created this map which basically shows you like places you've been. If you want to see more of the source code, you can have a look in the GitHub repository. You add it, as you can see, it, it, it instantly changes the color of here, Brazil. So that's it. And now let's see how this all happens in the code. We have, uh, we have the store which has one, um, vari one variable called countries, which is an array. Then we have an action add country, which basically just goes and adds the country into the countries list. I've added some code just to make sure that uh, we don't add the same country more than uh, once. And here we have a computed value, which just shows us the, the length of the array in order to give us like a number of uh, how many countries we've been to. So now let's talk about decorate. Here, if you want to use decorator, so you just do observable countries equals to an empty array. Because I create uh, this application using create react app and create react app doesn't support decorators yet, that's why I follow that logic. So 
After that, we create a new instance, and the first thing I do is that I have an array of all the counters I've been to, which you can see here. It's a very simple array with all of the countries, and I just like do a loop that basically populates here the countries. Then let's go and see what is happening in the first cell components. Again, here, very, very clean code. We have a, the render function which has a drop down that has the countries and one button that basically adds the country. Every time we select a country, we just go and uh, we set the internal state of this component to to have this country and then when we add the country basically calls the, the action of, uh, the, uh, of the store that adds the country into the array. After that what happens is that basically you just go to the map component. Things are a bit more complicated due to the way data map works and uh, yes here is where the rest of the calculation happen. Here we have a total which shows the, the computed value. Another thing important to mention is that Mobex has this new lifecycle function which is called component will react which basically every time there is a reaction to that component this lifecycle function is going to be called. So in that case if if the computed value changes it instantly goes and and re-updates all of the functions, all of the value, values in order to display the right data uh, in the map. Okay, so basically that's pretty much it. Thank you, Harris, for introducing us to, to, to Mobix. Thank you.